In this episode, we're going to answer a student's question on how to create fields in a groovy class and what happens behind the scenes. Stick around and I'll tell you all about it. And welcome back. So if you aren't aware, I am the author of the complete Apache Groovy developer course, everything you need to know to get started with the Groovy programming language. Almost 14 hours of content and we go through a, a wide variety of topics and I like to answer students questions and this is a great place to go ahead and answer them. So a student rec recently asked me about creating fields inside of a Groovy class and really what's happening behind the scenes because as we know Groovy does some magical stuff um, but if you don't actually look at what is going on behind the scenes then it all does kind of seem like magic. So that's what we're going to do today and let's just dive right in. So I'm going to create a new project here in IntelliJ. I'm using Java 1.8, Groovy 2.4.7. Versions really shouldn't matter because this is going to be a pretty simple demo. So we're going to say next. I'm going to say fields. We'll say finish. And we're going to create our project here. So the first thing I want to do is come into our source. And I'm going to create a new Groovy class. And we'll call this user. And let's just jump into here. So I'm going to create two properties here, string first and string last. So our user class is going to contain a first, uh, standing for a first name, and a last name property. And the way we declare those is um, by giving them a type or not giving them a type. We could come in here and say something like def. And that just means that we haven't really defined its type yet. So we know coming from the Java world that this is not allowed. When, when we create a class in Java, we need to be very strict about what we're doing here. So we would have to give it an access modifier of say private, public, protected, etc. And we need to give it a type and then we need to give it a variable name and we would need a semicolon to close it off. Here in Groovy, we can be a little less lenient and just kind of create our properties as is. And when we do something like this, we get some gener uh, we get some uh, generated um, getters and setters for us. And sometimes we don't really understand what's happening. So what I want to do is just go ahead and compile this class and look at what's going on behind the scenes. Now, if you're using something like the Groovy console, which we use a lot of in the course, you can also do this by going to inspect AST and see the compiled output. So what I'm going to do is just go up to build and recompile, or if you're in the class file, you can go to recompile. And what we're going to do is recompile it. It's going to compile it, it's going to build it, and it's going to throw the class file in our out directory. So now we have a user.class. If we actually open this in IntelliJ, IntelliJ has a decompiler. So it's going to decompile that class for us and show us what the code actually looks like. So remember, we didn't give these a uh, access modifier. So by default, if we don't give properties a access modifier, what Groovy is going to do is going to create private variables. So you can see here, private string first, private string last. And it's going to create getters and setters for all of those. So that is the first thing that we're looking at. Again, it's important to open up this class and look at it and see what's going on behind the scenes and see that it's not magic. When we're looking at this basic user class here, we don't really think of it as having all these getters and setters and actually having a private um, variable or field so that it can't be accessed outside of, um, from outside without using that getter or setter. So that's the first thing. So when we were going through this, one, the, the, the student in question basically asked, all right, well, what if I do want a private variable that I don't want um, uh, the outside world modifying? So let's just create another variable here. And this time, I'm going to create a, um, a, a private variable. And let's just call this a string. And we'll just call this foo. So now what I've done is actually created a variable called foo with an access modifier of private. So what I want to do is go ahead and recompile this again. And 
again, what we're going to do is look at the generated output to see what went on behind the scenes. So now, again, we still have our three fields here, um, first, last, and foo. But what you'll notice here is that there's getters and setters only for first and last. And this is because we declared our variable foo with an access moder modifier of private. If we have a private um, variable, then Groovy's not going to go ahead and create getters and setters for us. If we wanted uh, a getter, we can go ahead and just write one ourselves. And so this is usually what happens in Groovy is it'll get you the, the kind of 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time it's going to be great and do what it needs to do. But it does also doesn't stand in your way. So 20% of the time, in this case, uh, for Foo, we don't want getters and setters. We want to be able to create those ourselves. And to do so, we just, we just uh, went ahead and gave it an access modifier of private. So it's a little confusing, but just know that if you don't give it an access modifier, by default, Groovy is going to create private variables and then getters and setters for you. If you don't want it to have getters and setters and you want an actual private variable, just give it a private access modifier and everything will work out for you there. I hope that was uh, helpful. Uh, please subscribe to this channel if you found that helpful. Leave me some comments below and also leave some links below if you were interested in checking out this course. Uh, obviously, I highly recommend it. Um, and there's, you know, we have tons of testimonials from students all over who would also recommend it as well. So I hope that helped out and I will see you in the next one.